Welcome to the Skype Academy Presents session on Cloud PBX Voicemail with Exchange Server on-premises. My name is Lynn Rowe. I am a Supportability PM in the Beta Technical Support Group for Skype for Business. Today we'll be covering what's new, that is, previously mailboxes for Cloud PBX must be homed in Office 365 and currently you now have the option to have your mailboxes homed either on-premises or in Office 365. We'll cover the prerequisites and we'll go over in high level and in some detail of how, this features, how these features work. So what is voicemail for Cloud PBX? Voicemail will always be provided by Azure Voicemail. It will never be Exchange Unified Messaging. This is an important distinction to understand that despite the fact that you might have Exchange Unified Messaging features enabled and you might have Unified Messaging installed, there's really no functionality from the Unified Messaging services from within Exchange. An Exchange Unified Messaging policy is actually required to enable these client-side features. Features like the voicemail player showing up as a voicemail message in your Outlook email box, email, and, and voicemails being displayed in the voice tab of your Skype for Business client, along with some other things in Skype for Business, like the ability to click on um, the call voicemail to set up your voicemail box. It does require that if only a basic dial plan be configured in exchange, exchange on-premises. The meaning of a basic dial plan is that it does not, does not have to be a SIP type dial plan and you don't have to configure a bunch of options. It just means that the dial plan will have to be configured so that your policy can be defined that will be enabled on your end users. And also to understand that this voicemail uh, policy is automatically assigned when your mailbox is online. It's simply a manual process that must be done when your mailbox is homed on premises. Some of the Exchange Unified Messaging features are actually not available when using Azure Voicemail. Some of those features like Play on Phone. Play on Phone is the ability for you to send a voicemail to a PSTN phone, like perhaps you want to play the voicemail back on your cell phone via PSTN. That feature is not available. It will be left in the client if you have this policy defined. And if the end user sees it and clicks on it, they will get an error message. And there will be some indication of a missing unified messaging component if you were to view logs. There is also no subscriber access. Subscriber access is a familiar and very popular feature within, unified, within this uh, scope of unified messaging. And this function is simply not available with Azure Voicemail. There will be no ability for a caller to call in to their voicemail, read, listen to voicemails, listen to their calendar and their emails via the PSTN. There also will be no personal auto attendant. The personal auto attendant ability to configure the personal auto attendant will be available because this unified messaging dial plan is there. However, none of the functionality of the personal auto, auto attendant will ever be leveraged when a caller lands in your voicemail because as you remember, there is no real unified messaging functionality. The requirements in the end user experiences are really the same despite the fact that your mailbox is homed on premises or on or in the cloud. It's important to remember that it doesn't matter about the end user experience. It's just that you must 
manually configure this function when the Veltbox is homed online. This is an important um, remembrance because when you're in a migration scenario, these dial plans will also be enabled on the mailbox whenever the, the user is moved to the cloud. Next, we'll look at some of the requirements. The requirements for mailboxes homed on-premises are as follows. An Azure AD Sync configuration is is completed between your on-premises and Office 365. That is, your user accounts are replicated from the on-premises environment. All of your DNS records for your email domain still point to your on-premises, and they must be externally discoverable for EWS auto-discover processes. This is so that the Azure voicemail system can actually learn that the mailbox is still homed on premises and is a key tenant of a hybrid exchange deployment. Which brings me to the next bullet point, a fully configured um, hybrid configuration should be in place for exchange. Assuming that you're, you may or may not be in a position that you're going to migrate to the cloud if, it's, if you're not going to migrate to the cloud for Exchange, you still need the basic hybrid deployment sets defined, or deployment uh, features defined. It does require that OAuth be configured between Exchange, exchange and on-premises, uh, and your Exchange on-premises in Office 365. This will enable Azure Voicemail to gain access to the users' mailboxes. Users should not be licensed for an Exchange Online plan. This is part of the, the flow of learning, how Azure Voicemail learns where the user's mailbox is actually homed. We'll get into this momentarily. The user should be licensed for Skype for Business or an a Skype for Business Online plan too. This, of course, is required for you to have Enterprise Voice um, in the cloud. Uh, this is a, a basic feature of Cloud PBX. Rather, a basic configuration step for Cloud PBX. Users should be enabled for a unified messaging dial plan. This is, uh, as we've previously outlined, a requirement for these client features to, dis to be displayed in both your Skype for Business, and your Outlook uh, applications. For a full set of requirements, you can go to the following KB article, 319-5158, to uh, review the specific steps that you must, uh, you must complete for this hybrid configuration to be completed. Let's go over some of the design characteristics. So how does this work? Azure Voicemail evaluates the location of the mailbox based on its licensing. That is, if it happens to have a Exchange Online Plan 2, it will simply access the Online Plan 2 mailbox and deposit the voicemail. In the case of Exchange On-Premises, because the user is not licensed, this would fail, and then Azure Voicemail would then obtain access to the mailbox via Exchange Auto Discover in EWS, standard processes. This is one of the reasons we need to have all of the DNS entries in Auto Discover accessible via the cloud, and it not just be an on-premises uh, setting. It does provide the best and familiar experience for callers and for the end users uh, that does require the Exchange UM policy assignment. It's expected that some of these UM features may cause some confusion initially, but it should be a one-time experience and perhaps require end user uh, education. 
let's also just make a, a point here that the experience and the configuration requirements for having UM policies assigned is the same for on-premises and online. The difference is, is that when you have your Exchange mailbox on-premises, it will require manual steps for configuring Unified Messaging and these policies on the user's mailbox. A little more detail about how this does work. The callers are initially routed to Azure Voicemail. There are some pre-cache operations that take place from within Azure Voicemail, things like trying to play back a custom voicemail greeting or the recorded name for the user instead of providing a default greeting or pronounced name. Um, and the caller experience is optimized for the actual caller that's leaving your voicemail. It's important to understand that the design is, is intended to prevent any kind of delays for the caller to leave the voicemail. Next, after these initial, after the voicemail has actually been uh, recorded and the caller can disconnect, then Azure Voicemail performs all of these lazy back-end operations to ensure that the next caller that happens to be calling into your voicemail has a better experience. Things that would have initially caused that caller to wait up to maybe 30 seconds for them to retrieve this custom greeting, for example. These uh, lazy operations are completely outside the end user caller experience and thus not having any delays or long pauses when the user is, uh, or when the caller is uh, leaving the voicemail or getting access to your uh, voicemail box. And it does require and leverage Exchange Auto Discovery in EWS externally. There is an SMTP fallback process to ensure that if there are any cases where EWS does fail, an SMTP message would be sent to the user's inbox. We do understand there's always scenarios where maybe EWS is temporarily inaccessible and there might be a need to get that voicemail. We don't want it to be lost. So we do have a failover process. And in the next slide, we'll go into a little bit more detail about how this works. In this first block, we can see that uh, an incoming call lands in the Azure Voicemail system. At this time, Azure Voicemail is going to look in this cache to see if there happens to be any custom recordings, uh, custom voicemail recordings for this uh, caller's uh, mailbox. And one of the other things that is cached in this, uh, in this Redis cache happens to be all of the EWS authentication. If it, if it finds the voicemail or all of this cache information, it's played and uh, then the user is sent on to the, uh, uh, the caller is disconnected and then the processing will continue. If it's not found, we are going to play a default greeting and then normal call flow will follow after that. In this case, the caller has actually been disconnected. The voicemail has been left and we move on to the either the missed call notification if the, if the caller didn't leave a voicemail or with uh, the voicemail uh, being delivered to the user's mailbox. First, as I described in, in, in light detail, we're going to try to authenticate online first. And if it successfully finds that user's mailbox online, the process will simply end. It will be delivered to the online exchange voicemail box. If it is not found, either because there was no mailbox and or there was no license, in the case of the licensing, clearly there wouldn't be a mailbox. Then we try on-premises processes. We're going to use Auto Discover to, to, to locate where that user's mailbox actually resides. And it's important to understand that this process could take up to 30 seconds, and this is why we don't want the caller 
sitting in this scenario uh, where they're trying to look up things like and pull a, a custom voicemail greeting in because there would be a long pause and perhaps the caller would disconnect thinking that there was some kind of problem. This process uh, uh, will result in the next time that a caller calls and lands in this voicemail box. Hopefully that information would be cached and this call controller would be able to play it back uh, for the next caller. Uh, if in any case there is a failure in the ability to get to the user's mailbox via Auto Discover, we would then send that via SMTP. First off, Skype for business users, users that are homed in Office 365 Cloud, that's a Cloud PBX user, will always use Azure Voicemail. Despite the fact that we actually had this Exchange Unified Messaging dial plan configured or policy is, is present for this user, there will be no Unified Messaging processing. It's important to understand that it's just there to give client-side features, to allow these client-side features to be visible. It does require an Exchange hybrid deployment. Um, this is what enables Azure Voicemail to locate the end user's uh, mailbox in your on-premises environment. This is the change in our features for Azure Voicemail, the recent features. And the purpose of this notific this uh, presentation is to help you understand that this is a new capability in Azure Voicemail. Previously, you, Azure Voicemail would only deliver voicemail voicemails to users homed in the cloud. And now we actually are able to leverage the Exchange on-premises hybrid capabilities to find the mailbox and deliver the voicemail. It does provide the optimal experience for all callers. Um, there's no delay. And in the case of the actual user um, where the, or the, the end user that's receiving the voicemail, they have the optimal user experience um, based on the feature sets that are available in Azure Voicemail as of today. And of course, voicemail, Azure Voicemail relies on UM only for these for these functionalities and no processing, no unified messaging engine is leveraged. At this time, I would like to remind everyone to go to the Skype Operations Framework Academy website to find additional trainings to provide feedback, and to visit the Skype preview site to see if there's any additional Skype previews uh, that you would like to engage with and learn about. Also, make sure that you go out to the Skype community to discuss, ask questions, and provide feedback. We want to hear about it. If you see anything wrong, any kind of additional feedback that you can provide, about our training and our Skype Operations Framework would be greatly appreciated. On behalf of the Skype Operations Framework team, I would like to thank you for your attendance today, for reviewing this uh, training, and to please keep the feedback coming. Thank you and have a great day.